Welcome to Close Listening. I'm Zach Morgenstern, joined as always by silent co-host Ludwig Von B. Uh, so I made a video sort of about Meatloaf's classic album, Bad Outta Hell, and about Meatloaf more generally. Then I made a video about Bad Outta Hell 2. And then I made an album about Braver Than We Are, the final album put out by Meatloaf, I believe the final songwriting project for Jim Steinman. And I talked about how that album has been described as the true closer to the Bat Out of Hell series. And on the one hand, that makes sense because, you know, those were three albums where Jim Steinman wrote all the songs and Meatloaf is the singer. The first album, Bat Out of Hell, is sort of about a young rebel. The second album, Bat Out of Hell 2, I interpreted to be about a middle-aged man, as Meatloaf was when he was recording it, uh, trying to feel young again. And then the third album, Braver Than We Are, completes the trilogy because it's the meatloaf for the character is given into old age and resenting the young and crying for drastic change to the world to save him from this misery. That said, the reason why I call this album Braver Than We Are that does not have Bad Out of Hell in the title, Bad Out of Hell 3, is there was another album called Bat Out of Hell 3, and it's Bat Out of Hell 3, caption, the monster's loose, but this one provoked controversy because basically Jim Steinman wasn't involved in the project. He was having health problems. And he was like, hey, Meatloaf, what the heck? I, I was the man behind Bad Out of Hell 1 and Bad Out of Hell 2. What are you doing putting out Bad Out of Hell 3 if I can't be involved? Uh, and there was a bit of a, a dispute and it's great that Meatloaf and Jim got to collaborate together to make the true conclusion to the series in Braver Than We Are. That said, while I am committing to calling Braver Than We Are the true Bat Out of Hell 3 because it brings that sort of theme of the perspectives of the young, the middle-aged, and the old together, that's not, I am not dismissing Bat Out of Hell 3 as an album. For one, I just kind of like, like the title, The Monster is Loose. You know, I like the, the cover art, the picture of this dragon who's sort of vaguely in the background of Bat Out of Hell 2, you know, bursting out and being a character. Also, fun fact, uh, one of the many backup singers on this album is Jason Page, who people of my generation will know and love as the singer of the original Pokemon theme song. So how does this album proceed? What well, starts with the track, the title track called The Monster is Loose. The song is sung explosively as a confession. It's as if the hero of the last two albums is revealing himself as a villain. But like on the last two albums, he's still a lover boy. So he sings, the monster's loose, and now you have to choose, uh, as if uh, his love interest can still save him. Track number two is also great. It's more melodramatic pleading. It's called Blind as a Pat. It has more of a sensitive ballad sound than the poppy metal of the monster is loose. But like in the first track, it leans into the imagery of literally being a beast and pleading to be loved. Your love is blind, blind as a bat. And in Meatloaf's wonderfully melodramatic crying while he's singing delivery, perhaps it's questioning this notion that love is blind. Can love truly be as blind as a bat when you are a monster? Track number three is the real stunner on the album. It's all coming back to me now. This song was written by Jim Steinman, but it was written by Jim Steinman with him saying, this has got to be a song for a woman. And he gave it to a group called Pandora's Box. And it was most famously recorded by Celine Dion. But Meatloaf really wanted to record the song. And finally, 2006 comes along, Meatloaf's doing Bad Out of Hell Part 3, not according to Jim Steinman, uh, and he gets to do the song. It's a pretty cool tune. It's, it sounds kind of like a love song, a duet with a ghost, with the other singing part being performed by the Norwegian singer Marion, Marion Raven. Uh, it's just, it's a, it's a good song to look closely at the lyrics too, because it just sort of sounds at first like a well-produced but not particularly interesting love song, but between it being sung by great vocalists like Dion and like Meatloaf, and if you look at the details of the lyrics, it, it really sounds like it's a duet with a ghost. It's not an ordinary love song. In fact, Jim Steinman, quoted here on his personal website, described it as inspired by Wuthering Heights, and then of course he brings in a weird motorcycle analogy. Because with Steinman and Meatloaf, there's always this weird relationship between tough and cool and sentimental that I can't entirely parse. Uh, track number four is called Bad for Good. This is another Jim Steinman song, though I believe it was also one he wrote for a past project. In fact, it appeared on Jim Steinman's one and only solo album. It was the title track. 
And you know, this is Jim Steinman writing at its best. And you can tell because the piano is very present in the recording. And it's a great combination of rock and roll coolness with real melodic beauty and sort of Broadway style camp. It kind of revisits the feeling of the original Bad Out of Hell song. If it's something I want, then it's something I need. I wasn't built for comfort, I was built for speed. I think I got the melody right there. Track number five is called Cry Over Me. It's by Diane Warren. This is an, another songwriter who Meatloaf, I think, has worked with multiple times over the years. I don't get the appeal of this one. It's very belty, but the lyrics are a bit too simple for how over the top it is. Uh, it just goes, I want you to cry over me, die over me. Track number six, another great title from Jim Steinman, but this is Jim Steinman really leaning into the metal side of things, so it doesn't have quite the nice melody of a bad for good. But I mean, it's, it's called In the Land of the Pig, The Butcher's King. That title alone allows for great diabolic delivery. Track number seven is called Monstro. The lyrics are kind of minimal. It's a short, dramatic, instrumental. Track number eight is called Alive. This is another pretty solid one. It sounds kind of like bad for good. And basically the character on the album has committed to whatever his path is that he describes with punchy phrases like, I'm a runaway train on a broken track. I'm a ticker on the bomb that you can't turn back. So just more pumped up. Yeah, be a badass. Run, live your life. Track number nine is called If Only Call God to Could Talk. Uh, piano is louder here, and the singer is bemoaning that God can't talk and tell you to come back to him. Uh, this is the one track on the album that makes you question whether it's literally about being a monster or whether it's more of a metaphor thing. You know, if he's calling for God to intervene, is he really a hellhound? And that's kind of the ambiguity with this record. Because on the one hand, in a music video for the previous record, Meatloaf had explored Beauty and the Beast imagery. So the idea of doing an album where he's literally singing as sort of a half man, half monster makes sense. But at the end of the day, the, these aren't. this isn't a particularly tight concept album. So the, the idea that every singer on every track would be hellish and a literal monster doesn't quite make sense. Track number 10, If It Ain't Broke, Break It. It's a Jim Simon song. Uh, again, not as good as Bad for Good or It's All Coming Back to Me Now, but it's a nice little rocker offering nihilistic advice. The chorus is almost spoken and kind of fun to chant. If it ain't real, fake it. If it ain't yours, take it. If it's all gone bad, forsake it. And if it ain't broke, break it. Track number 11 is called What About Love? Not to be confused with the, the more famous song by the band Toronto and recorded, I believe, by Heart. Uh, this one, though, it is still a poppy ballad, and it's a, and features a great duet vocal part from Patti Russo. Track number 12 is called Seize the Night. It's also by Jim Steinman. It sounds kind of like a Christmas song, a sort of bless the night with darkness message. Track number 13, again, Jim Steinman, as you can tell by the title, the future ain't what it used to be. I thought it was a solid combination of cleanness and power on the vocals. It has a big gospel sound, but Overall, the song didn't stand out. And then finally, we end the album with a song called Cry to Heaven. This is a beautiful closer. It's it's not overdone, but Meat Meatloaf's voice just has this natural crying sound into it. And it speaks to the spirit and ambiguity of the album's meaning. Cry to heaven, and if you can't, cry like hell. So I got have a lot of ambivalence about this record. You know, I said at the beginning that, you know, Jim Steinman wasn't actively involved in the project, but as you could see, they managed to put together various Jim Steinman compositions he'd written over the years. Some of them were pretty good, some of them not so much. The first Bad Out of Hell record was only seven tracks long, and the, the next two, as well as Braver Than We Are, have a few more tracks. And I feel like if you're writing these epic power ballads, you know, you don't have to have that many tracks to put together a full great album. The seven tracks on Bad Out of Hell are enough. So this is one where I feel like, what if we only had a few songs, but they were the best songs? So I think the three songs that are truly great on here are It's All Coming Back to Me Now, Bad for Good, and Alive. And then if we want to have some songs that aren't perfect to listen to, but add some nice personality to the album. We could certainly add The Monster is Loose, Blind as a Bat, and In the Land of the Pig, The Butcher is King. And then finally, I would conclude the album with Cry to Heaven. That's a nice little closer. So those would be the seven tracks. Keep this album at its best. Don't overdo it with songs with kind of repeating content. Just let the good songs be enjoyed so they don't get drowned out. I still lean towards the idea that Braver Than We Are is the true Bad Out of Hell 3 because Jim Steinman was actually involved. 
but there's plenty to enjoy on this album here. I just think it runs a little long and you should focus in on those seven good to great tracks. I'm Zach Morgenstern. This is Ludwig Bonby. See you next time. Mm -hmm.